Hello my soccer universe and welcome to this week's area uh, review. We will review an entire week. That was Coppa Italia, that was Serie A and headline number one. If you're a Juventus fan, you must be very, 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 very happy. This was a near perfect week for Cristiano and his Juventus teammates. Cristiano scored the goals, but I think there's another guy starting with C, Chiellini who definitely helped out in a big way as well. So for me, Juventus are the winners of this weekend. Juventus, want to be careful, they are still in this title race. I am actually starting to come around on them and we'll see where they will go. Other headlines is, of course, that Inter more or less shot themselves in the foot and then had a rather disappointing uh, week. We had a crazy draw between Atalanta and Torino in the league that we definitely have to talk about. Uh, we also have to talk about the woes of Napoli a little bit because it really does not look good and it is, will be a very decisive week for Napoli come come up and especially for the coach. Um, the Roman teams, a little bit opposing trends, uh, although I think both of them can make a challenge potentially, Lazio especially in a good uh, way and Milan stay on top. I mean, not much changed up top because all the big ones were winning. But we're gonna start this uh, review, of course, in the Coppa Italia with the semi final Inter Juve, one of the biggest games in Italy, and probably among the big three, those two have the biggest grudge between them. So it was all set up for a dramatic semi final. Um, thought Juve at the beginning had a little bit the better of the exchanges, but then Barella services Martinez, who puts it into the net. 1 0 Inter. And I thought, wow, yes, this is gonna, this will show Juve one more time because Juve definitely wanted to show that uh, their performance a few weeks ago was not that bad. And it has to be said, Inter did not have Lukaku, did not have Hakimi. So a lot of the offensive power was uh, taken away from them, but I still thought, I mean, going uh, take, to take the lead that early will actually give Inter quite some confidence. However, Inter does what Inter does best. They implode. Once again, uh, yes, Cristiano scored both goals, but I think in both cases the story is what were the Inter defenders uh, thinking. The first one is um, the penalty that led to the 1-1. Ashley Young does not, there is no need for him to pull Quadrado that way and especially that stupidly. Yes, the cross was damn dangerous, but I, I am not sure if Quadrado would have gotten there. And second of all, I mean, if you had so why do you pull him down? I mean, the situation was done. I mean, it was an absolute unnecessary penalty foul. Um, the way Cristiano converted, though, that was a sight to behold. <laughs> I mean, that the net didn't, didn't, didn't break. Pretty cool. And then, I think it was between Bastoni and Handanovic. Complete miscommunication there. No danger whatsoever. I mean, it, yes, where the goalkeeper needs to come out of the box uh, to clear so, so, so something, it's always a little bit of a dangerous situation. However, there needs to be a clear communication between Bastoni and Handanovic. But they collide. Cristiano is there to pick up the pieces, makes one touch, makes a second touch, and the ball rolls via the uh, far post into the net. I have to give him a credit. The awareness that he had, he, he knew he had to take the shot quickly and the way he, uh, he gave just enough spice on the ball to let, let it go in, 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 into the net. And just like that, the tides had turned and Juventus uh, were up with a 2-1 lead and rather safely played home. I mean, the game was really an exciting game to watch and probably Inter could have equalized in the second half. And Let's be fair, it should have, should have probably ended in, in, in a draw, but that Juventus pulled out that win. Big boost for the confidence, because uh, yes, Inter had players out, but that's a big one. There is a return leg to be played, and we have to see how Inter will respond. Return leg happens Tuesday evening. Definitely one to watch. I think on Tuesday, whatever is playing, that's the game you want to watch for sure uh, that's going. I also expected the other semi-final to be an exciting game, but... Boy, it was that a stinker. An absolute, absolute, absolute stinker. And yes, they, I mean, Gattuso played what he could play, but uh, I mean, I looked at Insigne, he barely could anything 
get going. I mean, it was really, really bad from Napoli and Atalanta kind of was content with just standing behind. I thought that Atalanta well, they were the more mature team with a little bit luck. They could have maybe gotten the win. But it has to be said, what Napoli was playing, ooh, whoa, 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 this did not look good. And I think all eyes will be now on the return leg. And as we will see in the schedule come, come, come up, it was the next bad news for Napoli right there. And Gattuso being under some serious pressure already. Moving on to the Serie A weekend, uh, I completely had my schedule for the Serie A weekend messed up and I did not think that uh, Fiorentina Inter is played on Friday evening. I for some reason had this down for Saturday afternoon. Now I was playing Friday, Friday evening when I realized Inter was already up. Um, from what I could tell from the highlights and match reports, it was not an exciting Inter performance. It was rather flat, but they get the goals through Barella and Perisic to pull out a, will, uh, a win. Can I just say how much I hate 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 those Inter away jerseys. Inter has a pretty interesting home kit, an excellent third kit and a horrific away kit. Just putting it up there. So yeah, Inter and with that they actually take the, league, the lead in the league because they have um, were two points behind Milan ahead of that three points takes and one point of course Milan as you can all, all see uh, took the lead again. The Atalanta Torino game um, I probably should have watched. I know that at 3.30 I tend to watch Germany because they switch between the five games. So there needs to be a really big, big game that I'm not watching that. Atalanta Torino almost qualified. However, I have to say the way the game was going, I probably would have switched even over after half an hour because from between the 14th and 21st, Atalanta scored three goals. Ilicic, the, the opener, then um, Gossens, Probably uh, he was the main driver behind the goal of the Council City go on goal in the 19th and the 21st Muriel. That you thought sealed the game. And I probably would not have thought that Torino can come back. I will come back. They came just before the half. They get a penalty that is initially saved. But I have to say, this is one of the few things. Belotti, Belotti's penalty was saved, but he converts the rebound with a volley, thunderous volley into the net. That has to be seen to be believed. I actually was happy that he didn't convert the penalty because the shot after was all the much better. And then just before the halftime, Bremer, Bremer puts it into the net. 3-2 out of more or less nowhere. And Atalanta then play very un atalanta like try to kind of um, negotiate the game and uh, avoid another goal going in. Uh, and I have, have to say, yes, the Ilicic came out in the fee, in the fee I think they were already look, looking forward to the Coppa Italia final. Whereas um, Torino brought ev everyone off and in the end Zaza, who actually had a de decent week. I mean, for, for me, Zaza is the joke player in, in Serie A at, at, at the moment, but he comes off, Bonazzoli comes on. Uh, Verdi, who came on before as well, then assists Bonazzoli in the fourth and make it 3-3. Big shot in the arm for, for Torino, who... Probably, I all, all, all already said, they are way too good side to be down down there. I think Torino will pick up a few points coming in. However, I did not watch that one, but I cleared the schedule for Juve Roma. And what a crazy game that was. I am still want to sing my praises on Fonseca, because if you watch Roma, it's a great side to watch. The one thing that they're lacking is punch up front. And Edin Dzeko, yes, he was reinstated. He came on a little bit late. But you need someone. I know Mayoral had a goal scoring record, but I always find Roma inc too inconsistent up top. They played wonderfully. The first 10 minutes, it was all Roma weaving passes and so on. But whenever it goes like that, a side of the character of Juventus cannot be broken down. Yes, Juventus will also, also play uh, good, but they had Chiellini back. So Chiellini and, Bonucci, and Bonucci back there, and they made a brick wall, and then with some fine passing. Uh, having Ronaldo up front, who whenever he turned up on in front of front goal was super dangerous. And that's exactly what happened in the third, 30th minute. Morata plays the ball to Ronaldo, who, again, a very precise, not a hard shot, a very precise shot, puts it in the net, one nil Juventus. The game turned on its head right there. However, it proved to be a pattern for, for, for the entire game with all the great uh, fluency that Roma had. 
they were barely threatening because they hit the brick wall in many ways. And whenever Ronaldo showed up, I mean another one, uh, it got deflected, but he hits the crossbar where I really thought it is 2-0, it would have been 2-0 two, 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 two at the half. Um, Roma really tried a lot, but then uh, Pirlo made very inspired um, substitution brings uh, bring Cuadrado and Kulusevski on, who immediately <laughs> combine and um, uh, I think it was a um, Cool, 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 Seski cross uh, across the goal mouth that Ibanez then puts into his own net. But Cristiano would, would have been waiting there to pull, pull it in as well. It's 2 0, and there was no coming back for Roma, absolutely not. And yes, uh, um, Bonucci had to come off with a sl probably a muscle in injury. We have, have, have to see, but he and Chiellini really put on another masterclass in defending there. Um, big, big credit to them and Juventus pulling a 2-0 victory and again Roma being great against small opponents, against a big opponent they have not gotten a single win so far. And that might be a little, little, little bit concerning, I still say keep Fonseca because I think they can, this is just a minor change that they have to adjust. I think Roma could be, if they keep it calm. Roma could be a team that will be talked talking about next the next season for challenging for the Scudetto. I really, 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 really think so. With all the trouble that's going around. For Juventus, having Chiellini back helps a lot. If Juventus can get a little bit more consistency, I think everyone, the two Milan clubs, will be shaking. It's still, many people say that the title will go to, go to Milan and chances are that the title will be going to Milan this season, but I don't count out Juve. I don't count out Juve, it's not that far behind. And with the propensity of one team of slipping up and the other one really where, yes, they get the wins, the other one really overperforming in the season. I'll be hard pressed to count Juve out. Juve for me is a title contender at this moment. Napoli, not any, any, anymore. They completely collapsed. I mean, yes, injuries, blah, 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 blah. You cannot let Goran Pandev uh, ditch his walking stick and uh, score two, two goals on you in the 11th and the 26th. Uh, the old man Pandev taking apart Na Napoli, giving also Genoa probably now, finally, they might not be in the relegation talk. Insigne coming on lay, uh, in the second half, Ozyman coming on in the second half, eh, they just get a goal through Paul Popolitano. It's Gattuso is in trouble. Big week come, come, come up. I'm not in favor of sacking a coach, but everyone screams it from the rooftops that it's gonna be tight for Gattuso going forward. I personally, you know, I watched of course Milan Crotone. What I expected is almost what happened, except that the first half was a lot more nervy than I than it was comfortable to to, to me. Um, Milan started well. They had a goal from um, uh, Calabria, right for the sofa offside, taken uh, off. But I have to honestly say, uh, especially Unas caused Milan quite some trouble, um, and they couldn't stitch up passes. I mean. Uh, Crotone gave it their all. It was the typically the small town, a small team with trying to play some nice uh, soccer, giving a big team trouble. And however it happens, you usually run out of gas. You didn't run out of gas in the first half, but what well, the first goal by uh, Zlatan was just amazing. Uh, the way he sets it up, plays it to Leao, who then plays it back to him, and the way he finishes, this was a great goal. Absolutely loved that one. And in the second half, uh, I mean, Salah makers had to come, come off. He did not look sharp. Uh, a lot of lost balls. Castillo come, uh, comes on and then he brings, and then in the 62nd, 63rd, the third is probably the decisive scene in many ways. Chalonoglu came on, so you actually got a little bit more punch um, go, go, going forward because uh, Chalonoglu is kind of the glue that holds the front to, together. And Unas, who has been an absolute thorn in the side of Milan, the whole first half comes off. He was gassed. And a minute later, Hernandez runs in the box, plays the play, plays across the goal mouth, and Ibrahimovic can tap it in. Five minutes later, Chalnoglu on to Rebic, and then a minute, and then more or less right off the kick, kick, kick of the two combine again, 
and it's 4-0 and then Milan takes it off. Yes, Mandzukic came then on uh, for Ibra. I would have liked him to, uh, to come and score it, but it was all then. Let's take it easy. We have another game against Spezia that we need to win. And then we have a pretty tough week come, coming ahead as well because Europa League and the little matter of the Milan Derby come coming up. So let's say, let's say ourselves, 4 4 nil was decisive in the end, was deserved in the end, but it was not as easy as one would hope for. Uh, of the late games, I didn't see much. I think that Udine winning against Hellas was also a surprise. Bologna giving it really to Parma and Lazio. Cagliari, 1-0 win. Uh, also, Lazio having a pretty good uh, form. If we look at the standings, I mean, Milan and Inter stay top. Juve moving now ahead of Roma. Uh, and Lazio is in fifth in our level on points with Roma. So Lazio entering the conversation. Well, I think Napoli and Atalanta probably put themselves a little bit out of the challenge for the Champions League spots for the moment. But this season in Italy is so crazy that everything can change. Towards the bottom, it seems pretty much a foregone conclusion with Torino picking up a big point here. Uh, they might slide in, but I still think Torino is too good, 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 good of a squad. Uh, and they pick up a lot of draws, if you, if you see. If they convert a few of those and wins, Torino will go towards the midfield. I'm more looking at the likes of Spezia and potentially Benevento and maybe Genoa to drop but I actually don't really see that happening either uh, it will be sad for Cagliari and Parma though if they actually would go down I would hate to see them leave Serie A uh, if we look at the expected standings yeah, it's still Inter ahead of Milan and Juve, very, very much level, level, level. Roma now in fourth spot and Atalanta only in fifth. So the Roma, La Roma is going back in, but uh, Lazio is just behind. You see uh, the top, it's the top three and then the next four who are much, very much level. And we have to see where this goes from that uh, moment forward. And then the bottom three also, that's pretty key here that there is a brick wall at the line and it's unlikely that any one of these three will make it out of that zone. The upcoming round, I mean, look no further to Sunday evening. Inter Lazio is a game I'm looking forward to uh, as a potential trip up for Inter, but also uh, it's an important game for Lazio. I've been in really, really good form. Uh, that will be one to watch. The other one, Napoli Juve, has a little bit lost its luster and I think this will be the make or break week if Gattuso will make it through um, the season. If he can make the cup final against Atalanta and then pick up points against Juve and Juve have been all uh, owning them as, uh, as of late, I think then Gattuso will stay on. I just don't quite see it happening and it's a little bit sad to be honest but those are the two big games uh, to watch there and of course I hope that Milan does not trip up against Spezia. So that was it from me for this week in Italy. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. Drop a line below if you want to uh, add something to the conversation. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and clicking the little bell icon so that you get an update whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, wish you a wonderful day. Bye.